Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 948. Hello, it's Mike Matthews. That was a zero. Okay, I put a zero there and a zero there, so now I made an eight. Well, there you go. Uh, broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Uh, it's Mike Matthews with Haley stopping Hi. by. Hello. I'm here to criticize all of your hand signals. Hey, guys! Oh, wait. Mike's Daily Podcast. Nice catch. Wow, that was quick. Because the chorus was going to jump in there. And they were going to say something like, Mike's Daily Podcast. I think I'm going to visit Jack London Square every moment I can when I can take my dog there because... There are lots of really neat people and beautiful Bay Area sites everywhere. I caught a sunset that would make you stop and stare, Haley. I enjoyed my conversation with a nice lady from Kansas named Nicole. Mike's Daily Podcast. She had a Pomeranian. Those dogs are fluffy. True. And they can get really old. Mike's. Plus, they can be daily taken on planes. Podcast. In the cabin, unlike my dog. Yeah. Who gets thrown in the plane's basement. That's why he's never flown. I see. Because they put him in that crate down in them. My girlfriend uh, does animal care. Like, she's a... I never knew that. She's a vet tech assistant. Oh, wait, you did say that. Yes. And um, whenever we discuss a certain breed of dog, she's like, yeah, they're jerks. <laughs> There's been like one or two breeds that she's been like, no, they're really nice in general. Like, uh-huh. Like, they're really nice to work with, but general Pomeranians, uh, Chihuahuas are, of course, 50% hate and 50% <laughs> quiver. Um, quiver. Uh, Labradors, she said, are huge jerks when they're on the, the vet table. I think it's just the vet table. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Once they get on the vet table... They're oh. just like, I'm not going to cooperate with anything. Oh. And... My girlfriend's the one that handles, like, the bodies once, once, like, they pass away. Uh Uh-huh. And she's like, I had to deal with another 50-pound dead dog today! Oh. That's sad. And what do they do with the dogs? They throw them in a freezer. And then the owners decide what to do with them? Uh, they'll cremate them. Oh. They'll cremate them, and then the owners can either get a little jar with their name engraved on them, or like a shake box, so they can go and spread their ashes. Or they'll oh. they'll spread the ashes with a bunch of other pets. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. I never knew that dark side of the world of pet petri. It's pretty similar to what pets. you do with humans. Like uh, you either spread the ashes or you put it in a little jar and put it on your shelf. Hey, we went really dark at the beginning of this show. Oh, uh, I did watch that one YouTube thing about bizarre things about Disneyland mm-hmm. from Dainja Dowlin. Dainja Dowlin. Sponsor what, us, please. And one of the things they were talking about was how one of the big things in Disneyland, people spreading ashes. Oh, and, yeah. And... and Every Disney employee is taught specifically what they need to do when that happens. When they find they come upon ashes. Yeah. And, like, they specifically monitor certain rides. Like, the Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, because the, their people are known to be on the ride spreading ashes. Oh my gosh! Uh-huh. That's just, like, so inconsiderate for everyone involved. Yeah, it's just like they that was their last wish, was to have their ashes spread in Disneyland or something <sighs> on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. And apparently it's pretty common. Oh my gosh, wow. Because it's kind of known that people do that. Anyway. Uh, cafe, anyway. Cafe, anyway. Yeah, so that's... Uh, Nicole's very nice. She was from Kansas. She was very... Uh, oh my gosh, it's expensive here. I'm like, yeah, you're, yeah, you've probably... She just moved here. She's like, why is it so expensive? I'm like, well, everything is going on in the Bay Area right now. You've got the, all the companies and the weather's nice. It's hip and also, at the same time, happening. 
both things. Hey, what was that thing you were reading about nudes? Oh, it was just a quote from Twitter where if you're going to send nudes, store your nude nudes. pictures. Yes, store your nudes with viruses attached, weaponize your nudes, train your nudes to empty bank accounts when improperly accessed, teach karate to your nudes. All good advice for life. Uh huh. Silly. I think we're silly again. Did we go silly again? We went from dark to silly. I don't know. We should ask our uh, our guest. Now, uh, Tyler's been really gracious because I accidentally switched the two songs. The past two shows, if you listen to the past two interviews and we're introducing the song, that's not the song. So take the two songs that you heard and flip them around. So I think I played Casenia the first day when I should have been playing Ket. Kachaka Which he like corrected me 15 times on And then Kasenia was supposed to play yesterday But I played Kachaka yesterday I see well that's uh But today's Midnight Mai Tai so that's Not hard to that's not gonna Because that doesn't start with a C A Mm -hmm. And that won't mess me up Mm -hmm. Then That's pretty much I'm gonna have a really long day today Because I leave here and then I'm gonna come back later Yeah you are gonna have a long day and then play hot. Are you going to be here later? Who's recording uh, that? No. Uh, you'll have the other two people that are going to be working here. At least one of them will stick around. Oh, okay. I can't wait. I, I enjoy both those people. Yes. Kevin, who has been on the show. He was before. on the show last week. Yes, he was on a Friday. Talking about beer. Show. But uh, he, he doesn't leave until 9, so he may stick around. Awesome. Oh. Are you enjoying that coffee? And then not really. Haley told me uh, something else very interesting about how there was all these articles about how well Hillary did at the debates, and then it turned out those articles were by Time Warner, and they're one of the biggest contributors to Haley, uh, Hillary's, not Haley's, <coughs> Haley or A's, uh campaign. Yeah, CNN has a huge news network, and those are the ones that were primarily reporting on the uh, election. Mm-hmm. And they were saying, oh, Hillary Clinton, very strong candidate, still the front runner, uh, which isn't necessarily true. And if you look at all the polls, uh, Bernie Sanders is definitely winning as far as like Internet polls are concerned. Uh, all of those, almost all of those reports were by the CNN News Network, and they're owned by Time Warner, and they're the seventh largest donor on the Hillary Clinton campaign. Mm. So well- they may be a little bit biased. Who knows? I do see the Bernie Sa- Sanders fans are all over Facebook. Yeah. And, like, it, they're, they will not shut up! It's true. It's like, I'm, what am I going to post today? I'll post 15 things about Bernie. Bernie, 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 Bernie. Hey, <laughs> I'm not getting any money for this. I'm going to post my... Were you just doing a, a Muppet? Uh, Sesame Street. Oh. Hello there, Bert. Hi. Wait, what did he say? Hey, what was his foot? Yeah, b- birds kind of. I don't know. I can't do any of Frank Oz's voices. Frank Oz, he was also the voice of Yoda. And Miss Piggy, I think. Oh, Kermie. Oh, Kermie. Oh. Please, we'd love to hear your Muppet impression. Email us at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. I used to watch so many Bert and Ernie videos as a kid. My favorite was the one where Ernie was scared inside of an ancient pyramid that they were exploring. And so he starts kind of singing his song. And then one of the statues that looks like him comes to life and starts singing and dancing with him. Yeah. That must have been a classic. You keep, you know, so many scenes from the Muppets, the Muppet Show that I just I know. That was Sesame Street. Oh, whoops! Like the one with Kermit and the jar. The Kermit and the jar of liquid. That was that he interviewed from Planet Coo's vein. That's interesting as well. So uh, that's on YouTube. Oh look, who just walked in? It's Fanita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? And some disgruntled fiddle player tell you what. What? Uh, those are my bones. I'm old. 
Hey, I, I think Bernie Sanders is a crazy Santa Claus to come down from a UFO. Vote for Trump. What? You're voting? What? You want Trump now? Trump? I thought you were all Trump in- is a empty husk being controlled by the whispering evil machinations of his tear piece. I know that's why I lock him. See, I was voting for Rand Cruiser, uh, Rand Paul and Ted Cruz together, Rand Cruiser, but then Trump, he changed my mind when he said that Obama was a Muslim, which is the truth. Rand Cruiser, was that your first car? It was, it, uh, yeah, the car's great. No, actually, mine was a truck, big truck, uh, Chevy truck, Chevy, Chevy Silverado. But there's no presidential people that are named after that, so... Haley, I feel like you and I are having a really strong connection right now. Would you like me to go get you some coffee that I made on a campfire stove? That sounds delicious. It doesn't sound delicious. Don't try any, Haley! It'll make the inside of your guts turn black! What's wrong with that? I do Got very internal fortitude. Well, all right, look who else just walked in. Hello there, Mike. I make the root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh boy, brewmaster. I'm so sad. We heard about you and um. Uh, what's what's her face? <laughs> Phyllis. <laughs> Phyllis von Stinkelhoff. Uh, who? Shelly Shuhart. You and uh, Jennifer Lawrence or whoever it was. Yeah, you broke up. I was dating Jennifer Lawrence? Awesome. No, well, uh, Shelly Shuhart, you guys broke up. I know, that's very sad. But that's all right, because don't talk about it anymore, because I'll cut you. Want well, some of my delicious earth beer? He's uh, still so aggressive. He is. I thought once you broken up, you would you would not be so aggressive anymore. I'm just full of hate and rage. You're like a chihuahua. <laughs> and you're really small like a chihuahua, too. I don't know what your girlfriend is talking about. First off, that Pomeranian yesterday did not bark once, was the sweetest dog. Then I've met several other Pomeranians recently that are very chill. There was a chihuahua at this thing yesterday I was at, this big party, the soiree, Donald Trump fundraiser. And this chihuahua was so cool and calm. Really? And then Donald Trump came in and said, You know what? My hair is controlling me, and I'm huge. You huge. I have never met a friendly chihuahua. Oh, in my God. my life. I've never met a mean chihuahua in what? my life, How? which is longer than yours. How? Chihuahuas are all nice and wonderful. Never. You you probably come at them like I don't. Dog. I stay away from them. And they're probably, they're picking up on your hate towards them. That's just a theory. No. <laughs> no. Uh, well, anyway, whether we agree to disagree is where we'll be. You're a lot more of a dog person than I am. I'll give, I'll say that much. I like dogs. Yes. I'm okay with dogs. I like cats too, but I'm allergic to them. So after I'm around them for about an hour, I start to sneeze and get all like I'm going to faint. They can sense your allergies. That's why they get on my lap and I pet them and they purr. Yeah. And then you can never get them off of your lap. And then I'm like, what what happening to my neck? It's turning into a huge red pustule. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, dogs, cats, whatever. Snakes. I'm now fi- snakes. Fish. Birds. So what would be your favorite pet that wasn't like your typical pet? A fish. A fish? Did yeah. you have ever have a fish? No. I wish I did. I ate fish last night. Me too. No. Yesterday afternoon. What what kind of fish did you have? Stick fish. Stick fish? Yeah. What's that? It's the kind of fish that they put in fish sticks. Ah oh, God, you're funny. Ah. Oh. Those are good. I love it. Was it was it Borden's? 
No, it was some off-brand because they uh, made them gluten-free. Do you eat it with a ton of ketchup? No. I had it with this sriracha ranch. Mm. Mm Mmm. I never had sriracha ranch. Yeah, it's it's spicy. I come home last night and my roommate, who's uh, like... Twenty something. Mm-hmm. He's he just got like a new. Uh, what do you call those big black pans? The skillet. A skillet, and he's he's cooking a steak on it, and oh. it is it is freaking smoking up the room. As you know, he destroyed right. a, a microwave recently using yeah. the um, thingamajig with the for the to heat up noodles. Right. So was he pushing out the burnt toast smell with a? <laughs> Fried steak? I don't... Yeah. Skillet steak? I don't know. And I'm like, uh, how li- how do you like your steak done, roommate? And roommate says, um, I like it medium rare. I'm like, that's so far beyond medium rare and what you've got in that pan right now. He's like, I know. I'm like, <laughs> you realize you've got it on full hot heat because it's a electric stove? Mm-hmm. And that once skillets absorb the heat, they, like, stay hot. They stay hot, yeah. I go, you you should just take that off. Don't grab the handle with your bare hand. Grab a stove. I'm like, you, what? You buy one of these and you didn't even watch a YouTube video on it? So I instructed him through it and all, all was well in the end. And he enjoyed his burnt steak. As a kid, we had this giant sort of frying pan type thing that was oven safe. Uh-huh. And my mom would make this dish that she'd throw a bunch of stuff into the pan, and then she was able to cook it in the oven. Ooh. And so one time it was done, and I was like, yum, delicious, as I grabbed the handle of it, <sighs> when it had just come out of the oven. And and you grabbed it with full force. Oh, yeah. Oh, ow. Mm-hmm. My roommate goes, have you ever burned your hand? <laughs> And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I think all cooks have, but yeah. you'd want to try and minimize the injury. Mm-hmm. So now do you always use the, the oven stoves, uh, gloves? Yeah, yeah. We have little pot holder type things. And yeah. my mom actually, like, from that moment on, my mom will actually place a pot holder, like, on the handle of it to signify that it just came out of the oven. Ah! Which is a really smart idea. Because the hand uh, holder won't catch fire? No. Because it's all hot? No. Oh, okay. It's not that hot. I hope you've enjoyed our uh, kitchen nightmares. talk. Kitchen nightmares. I'm Gordon Ramsay. Is that the guy that Hell's Kitchen guy? Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. yeah. Doing a horrible job in this kitchen. This chicken is so raw, it just crossed the road. Uh, tell us your best cooking nightmare kitchen stories at um, you can go to Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com to e- email did I tell you about the time that I was cooking and I went to put a little bit of basil to uh, flavor this dish uh-huh. and my mom had taken out the little grate type thing with the holes in it at the top of the basil uh, jar oh and all the basil came so out it, it, and it tasted like a pesto a pistol? A, pe- a pesto. Except oh, I pesto, had, yeah. Except I had already added a bunch of garlic and like a cream sauce to it, so it just tasted horrible. Oh. That's my kitchen nightmare story. That happened recently. That happened when you first started appearing on the show. Yeah. I, I probably said something about it. I hope that never happens to you again. Oh, it probably will. And you can also comment uh, on the Twitter which is at Mike Talks on Facebook.com slash Mike Daily Podcast and then other places. And we read your comments tweet, on the section. Tweet. 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 Emails from email and your comment not so comments. Tweet. 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 Rock and Robin! Tweet. 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 He rocks in the bed and it's going to tree. He's going to eat that chihuahua with his big peak. Rock and Robin! Tweet. Deadly Rock and Robin! Tweet. Tweet, tweet. The Robin's so rocking, he's rocking all over the world, smoking his sheesh. I feel like that would be more like a giant eagle <laughs> that would eat a chihuahua. Yeah. Totally. Would Robins that. don't eat flesh. There's, there's like eagles that will hunt deer, but they're that big. Dang. Uh-huh. So, fear. The... Eagle. The eagle. I think it's like don't the golden eagle. Don't fear the eagle. He became the sun. Don't fear the eagle. 
Says we'll get, we'll be able to fly. All the eagles are big. They fly out of the sky. The big eagle comes down the sky, and then it flies into your chimney. Don't fear then it the eagle. eats a bunch of your pudding. Don't fear the eagle. <laughs> the chihuahua comes out and says, "What the hell is this song?" Come on, baby, don't fear Blue oyster the cold. eagle. Come on, baby. They make a lot of pesto. Come on, baby. You can eat brewmaster's root beer if you put it in the freezer. Bring. Because it turns to ice. <laughs> that uh, one part of the song. Oh yeah. That I can never remember how. Oh, it goes, that with the, with, the, with the drums going. Yeah. Yeah. Great song. Cowbell. <laughs> we need more cowbell. I got a fever that can only be filled with a cowbell. Nice! He's doing that with his mouth, ladies and gentlemen. That, I'm doing that with my hands, ladies and gentlemen. I'm assuming there are both ladies and gentlemen listening to the show today. Yeah, I think so. Oh, we got another comment. It was on our voices again. Your comment... Wait, maybe I'll remember to put that little opener in here. You won't. Oh, my God! Email for me now, and you're calm and not so calm, mess. Uh, so <laughs> we got a compliment on our voices again, which just means we have horrible content. Oh, because they're just memorized, right? mesmerized. Yeah, they're memorized. Like, wow, you have a really great voice. <laughs> well, your voice is enchanting. Thank Go you. on, talk some more. I'm going to just sort of sit here. Uh, then uh, there's the uh, Amazon. Click on that. Buy something. We get money. Mike'sDailyPodcast.com. Go there first, though. And there's the PayPal. Becoming an Inglorious Mike's Daily Podcaster. The characters at Cafe Anyway will sing you a song. Oh, they're going to sing you a song now, I guess. That's what I just come up sing with. You? The lullaby of Broadway. Fossy hands. The sleep all day. I'm Good jazz hands. Good night, baby. Hey, did you hear? Uh, what's his name? Who did? Who did? Uh, uh, oh, Phantom of the Opera. Uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Andrew Lloyd Webber. He's he's written uh, a, a new musical, School of Rock. They've turned into a musical. And Andrew Lloyd Re- Webber wrote and that? And he's done the music for it. Interesting. And the lyricist is the guy who wrote the f- lyrics for... Oh, s- something. I can't think of it. It was uh, like an older deal. Anyway, Andrew Lloyd Webber, music. Huh. Finally... Uh, all the past interviews you can hear at MikeSillyPodcast.com. Let's get into that, into an interview, the finale of my Mike on Mobile with Tyler Yarbrough of the band The Gnarly Men. Into an interview. Mike on Mobile. What got you playing the guitar in the first place? I wanted to play the drums when I was a kid. And my parents bought me a guitar. <laughs> they were wise parents. <laughs> Turns out my father had played the guitar when he was in the Navy in World War II. He just never mentioned it. So many, 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 many years later, after he's long gone, I sent uh, a letter to a fellow that I found out was a shipmate of his. And I get this letter back from him. And he's like, yeah, we used to drink coffee in the mess hall and he would play guitar. I'm like, what? He never told me he played. He never mentioned the guitar, right? Anyway, so... He wound up getting me involved with an instructor by the name of Jack Francis in Southern Oregon. Jack was one of the original surf guys. He played, in fact, he taught guitar to the original surfaris. Whoa. He had great photographs, all these autographed photographs of the surfaris and the ventures and all of that stuff around his studio. Man, this guy was 70 years old at the time and he was Fast, let me tell you, his double picking was. He wow. was really wicked fast. Yeah. 
Of course, I could never use it. I mean, I was 14 years old. It was the 1970s, right? Nobody was playing surf music. Surf music was long dead. Ah, uh, darn disco. Darn disco. <laughs> so it just stayed in my head all these years. And lo and behold, surf music resurrects from the grave with all the punkers. Uh-huh. And it fits right in. And and when did you start uh, custom making your guitars? Well, that was maybe six years ago. But once I started messing around with surf music, I started hearing the sound of what I wanted in my head. And you go to Guitar Center and you play a few guitars and you were like, you know, never mind. Uh-huh. It's, it's just not going to happen. Meanwhile, I meet some people who are good woodworkers. I meet some people who are pickup winders and start looking at articles online and these guitars just started emerging in my head. Well, I wish this was a video uh, podcast so they could see all of them. Oh, wow. You've just gotten, is this another custom made one? It is. This one's um, largely made from um, Warmoth parts. So Warmoth is a company that builds uh, necks and bodies and all of that stuff so that you can custom make guitars on your own without having a lot of woodworking skills. So this is the guitar I started with. But the thing I wanted to do here was learn the inlay bit. So as you can see, the neck, the peg head has this moon inlaid into it and all the stars, which are oh. mother of pearl and and well, actually, nail heads. And <laughs> nail heads? Yeah, yeah. So then I continued that theme down here with the star and, and these, little, these little nails down here. But all the finishing work, you know, all the finishing Ooh. work is, is, is mine. And the nice thing about this is the warmest neck is just a brilliant neck. It's just, it, and, they, and they will make it to your specs. So it was, it was pretty easy to put together a great guitar with that. jazz rock band with you wouldn't that be fun well that's one of the things that happened with cachaca is i wound up with this this kind of classic um uh latin minor two five so that's e minor So uh, that's very a very Latin rock thing or oh, Latin jazz thing. Huh. But this one gets to do all kinds of other duty too. So it if if I have one guitar and I, I have to show up for a jam or I uh, a rock gig or anything like that. Sounds too. Yeah. When you go to a, a gig, does it feel kind of weird taking your beautiful works of art to the gig, your, your guitars? Not at all. They're meant to be played. I mean, it's that's what I built them for, and they're not they're not flawless. They're not works of art. They're 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 instruments. They're meant to be played. Um, I like the art aspect of them. It was a lot of fun, and they're cool because they're completely different than anything anybody else might have. Uh, you won't find them on the, you know, wall at, you know, Guitar Center or anything like that. And they sound the way I wanted them to sound, and they do what I need them to do. Uh-huh. Awesome. <laughs> That'll sound good. 
Lots of sounds out of the same axe. That's the idea with this guitar. Any uh, closing uh, words of advice? For those of people that want to pick up a guitar and are, are too afraid, they're too shy. Music is what we do. We're humans. We make music. We sing. Don't be afraid to sing. Don't be afraid to pick up a guitar. You need to make music. You need to make art because that's part of being human. That's part of who you are. If you're not doing that, you're, you're denying some part of yourself. Sooner or later, you'll find it. But the longer it takes you, the harder it gets. So if you're young and somebody says, ooh, you can't sing, ooh, you can't play, don't pay any attention to that. Just just sing. Top of your lungs. Sing. Play. Top of your lungs. Turn it up, baby. Rock them out. You know, like people tell me, oh, like they'll say, uh, Mike, I can't sing, so I won't sing. And then I actually hear them sing, and I'm like, hey... Wow, there's something there. Even like their off notes, they're cool. It adds a something, it's their style, you know? Like uh, some of the most famous country crooners, they sang off key, but that's what made them sound good, you know, because they were not hitting it right on, and it was very human. I just, okay, but beyond that, you know, go to church, sing in the choir. You know, you want to learn to sing? Go sing with the choir. You'll learn to read music. You'll learn to sing. You'll learn the right breath. You'll learn all of that stuff. You'll learn to, to work with a group. It's, I mean, how many amazing musicians have come out of the American church? Well, all of jazz, right? Mm-hmm. All of jazz comes from the church. Um, so I would really encourage anybody to, you know, if you want to, if you want to, participate in music and not get a lot of investment there's a great way to do it still picking up a guitar when you're a kid is still very very inexpensive get yourself a decent instructor and just just do it uh what gnarly man song should we end this with uh that should i play from your stash of songs Let's go with Midnight Mai Tai. That's a, that's one written by Robert. And Midnight Mai Tai is this really chill, laid back tune. We've got a couple more of Robert's tunes that are are coming down the pipeline tune. But but pipeline. Oh no. no. D- so easy pardon the mistakes <laughs> what there weren't any okay uh so midnight mai tai it's gnarly men tyler yarbrough thank you so much for being on mike's daily podcast this has been the funnest podcast interview mike on mobile ever and i, I feel immersed in the soul of california right now thank you so much mike it's just been drippy wet awesome
like him. He's cool. He was very, very good at explaining all the guitars. He was talking yesterday about how um, that that song that you mixed up the names of mm-hmm. was drawing some influence from uh, from like uh, Fleetwood Mac, Lindsey Buckingham. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I got uh, I got the Fleetwood Mac definitely, but I found more of the Pete Green era type. The Pete Green, I think. Tyler would be very much flattered by that. Yeah, because sort of, uh, I, as I showed you, like, oh well. Yeah. Part two. <laughs> and then part two comes around, it's just like, bling, bling, bling. Like that one song. What is bling, that called? Bling, bling, bling. Yeah, 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 that yeah. was. That. Dun, dun, dun. He talked about that in today's. Yeah. We were discussing that band as well. You know what? I, you then, when we had this conversation about Fleetwood Mac, I remembered Bob Welch was in Fleetwood Mac before yes. Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks. Mm-hmm. And Bob Welch went into this interesting rock disco phase in the late 70s that got him pretty popular with Sentimental Gentleman. Sentimental Gentleman. You're the one. All I need is you. And he had a song called Ebony Eyes. Ebony Eyes. And then he uh, did a couple other things, but his career kind of... He had some substance abuse problems later in life. And then, sadly, he ended his life in, I think, the late O's. Oh. Yeah. But he was... Go watch his videos on YouTube. It's, It's a perfect little slice of the disco era of 70s and whatnot. By the way, that song... Uh, depending if you guys named it in an interview or not, because I haven't had a chance to listen to this interview because I listened to it when the podcast actually comes out. Yes. It's Link uh, Ray is the artist, and it's called Rumble. Oh, thank you. As we go outside a cafe anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcast Valley. And here's today's podcast picture. The podcast picture, Haley, is... Oh, when I was... I, I had to remember for a second... Nine years ago, Haley, I was still living in Ventura, and I came up here with my now ex-wife, and we went to Sausalito, met up with her parents who were living over in Copperopolis. Copperopolis, nice place. In gold country. There was nothing there, and now there's things there. Yeah, back then, nine years ago, there was really nothing there. Nothing. There's a lake yeah. And then nothing. And I hear they've drained most of the lake since yeah. of the drought. But, of course. Uh, all these beautiful houses on the lake. Anyway, what would, they came out and met us in Sausalito. We drove up from Ventura, that eight-hour wonderful trek. And in Sausalito, we, we rented a, a little, you know, like a, what do you call it? Rent to, uh, rent, rent to VRB or whatever you do where pe- people rent their rooms out. I guess oh, sort of yeah. like what's now the bed breakfast. The, the, uh, what? B- B&B.com B- or something. B- yeah. That one. And then, um, so there was a cool trip we took over to T- Tiburon. And it was such a clear, beautiful day. And it was around this time of year where they have the Indian summer in the Bay Area. And it's so clear and sunny and shiny. And the water is reflecting. You can see San Francisco. Have I described this picture enough? Go see it. Mike'sDailyPodcast.com. I don't think I've been to Tiburon, Tiburon ever. Really? Yeah. Oh, you should take a trip out there. I would, but nah. Okay. Yeah. You can always take BART to San Francisco, get mm-hmm. on the ferry. The ferry will take you to Tiburon, and you have a nice, you get a nice trek across the bay, and you see Alcatraz and all that, and yeah. Angel Island, mm-hmm. and the Golden Gate Bridge. Mm-hmm. I strongly suggest you do it. Now! I don't know if I can uh, go on a ferry on the, uh, on the bay after I've been out there on a sailboat. Why? Because it's so much better from a sailboat. Because I've taken a ferry around. Like, uh, uh-huh. But um, my aunt works for a sailing company, and we went out on a boat once, and you're, like, right kind of on the water, and you're able to move all around the boat, and there's no walls or, like, or anything between you and the water, just like a rope. And it's kind of scary. Okay, we'll just never, ever go on the bay again because you, unless you go on in a sailboat. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we cleared that up. As long as wind is involved, blowing the boat out with the mainsail, 
As we get on to Sloop John B. Me and my cousins and me. Let me go home. I want to go home. Haley, we'll do... Finish uh, this podcast and go home. The next show... It's going to be Do You Know Dad? I don't know if you'll be on this one or not. I think you will. You'll be so lonely. I'm not doing a podcast for Friday because I, I have to go up to Bodega Bay. Oh. Um, with my, I will tell you all about that interesting trip because I'm sure it'll be interesting. Bodega Bay, some of you are like, what's that? Just think of Alfred Hitchcock, The Birds was filmed up there. And then there's going to be the weekend. And I think it'll be a busy one. So I probably won't get a Mike's Daily podcast done. Therefore, I am completely putting a knife through the name Mike's Daily podcast. But Monday, Monday for sure, I'm saying with fingers crossed. And Haley will be there, hopefully, yeah. with fingers crossed. And then we'll do the uh, Do You Know Dad? But that, that said by Bison Bentley, who's now in a jar. Yeah, it's just liquid. Liquid, you like that? Uh, like that jars of clay song. You, oh, are you gonna start singing that? No. The one thing, no. the one thing that I know. No. And that, I wanna go home. So Bison Bentley will be on that show as well as Valentino and Madame Rudebeck. Mike's TV Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.